My name is Ryan Anderson. I am an ATP and a CFI for airplane, instrument, and multi-engine aircraft. Today I would like to introduce you to a subject that is learned and forgotten or completely ignored by pilots because they do not think it is important to their flying. The subject today is airport lighting and signage or navigating an airport. If you do not know the signs and the lights, what they mean, what they're telling you, you will not be able to navigate the airport as efficiently as you should. One of the major problems that we're having in this country right now, according to the FAA, is runway incursions. A runway incursion could not only get you violated, it could cause injury or death. This is a major problem all throughout the country and the FAA has asked instructors to hit this subject with every flight review. I am making this available so you can continuously review it, know what you're doing, and know what you're talking about when you get on that airport and you need to taxi around. I want you to understand the difference between a non-movement area and a movement area. One of the questions that I ask many pilots, whether they be initial pilots, commercial, CFIs, even air traffic controllers who have their commercial license, is what color is the airport beacon? I estimate that less than 5% can tell me what all four airport beacons are. I estimate that less than 10% can tell me what two of them are. Why are airport beacons important? Why are any of the lights or signs important? Let's delve into this subject and find out. It has been suggested by many that night flight should be limited only to those who hold an instrument rating. To a point I understand this, but the first time I heard it, it made me mad. No one else should tell me what I can and cannot do as a private pilot when it comes to night flight. Finding airports at night can definitely be a challenge. Seeing the difference between runway lights and a row of street lights can sometimes be difficult. So to find an airport, one of the most helpful items is the rotating beacon. The first thing you will need to know is if the airport even has a rotating beacon and approximately where on the airport that beacon is located. Assuming the airport has one and you locate it, exactly what color would it be and why is this important? When I ask this question to pilots, the most common answer I get is red or blue, neither of which is the color of any beacon light. The color for any public access airport is alternating green and white. There are only three colors that will ever be in any beacon, and here is how you remember them. Color number one, white. Each beacon, with few exceptions, will contain the color white. When I was studying for my instrument rating, I learned that before all of the electronic navigation was implemented, airports used to send up a white searchlight through the clouds. Ideally, the pilot flying on top of the clouds would see that bright white searchlight shining through the top of the clouds, fly up to it, and then spiral down around it, always keeping it in sight. When he broke through the base of the clouds, there would be an airport all lit up waiting for him to land. So just remember, every beacon has white. On a military airport, they would shine two spotlights up to differentiate between the civilian airport and the military airport. If you think of how the military flies, typically in formation, this would make sense as two airplanes in formation could make that spiral down along each searchlight in order to find the airport. Color number two, green. Now every airport that touches the ground, or at least a landing platform on the building, has green. Think about an AC electrical ground that is green, or the green grass on terra firma. You can also think of it as a go light. You are green and good to go, or good to land. So our civilian airport has one white light or searchlight, and one green light because it touches the ground. A military-only airport has one green light because it touches the ground, and two white lights or searchlights that flash in a quick dual flash. The beacon is like a Y as you look at it from the top. So what you will see in the lights is green, white, white. Green, white, white. In night flying especially, this can be very important to differentiate the two beacons. Take Rapid City, South Dakota, for instance. The public airport is located in close proximity to Ellsworth Air Force Base. 
More than once, a major airline has landed on the Air Force Base, mistaking it for the civilian airport. This is very embarrassing and causes a lot of headaches for a lot of people. Color number three is yellow. What does yellow mean? Yellow is cautionary. Anytime you see yellow, whether it is on an airport or on the road, it means caution. Like a street light, when you see the yellow light come on, it is cautioning you that the light is about to turn red. So how and where is yellow used? A seaplane base or water landing only is our first example. When you have a seaplane base with only a water landing, you will have the white searchlight along with the yellow to caution you about something. Basically, if you are not a seaplane and you attempt a landing, you are ditching and in for a big surprise. So a seaplane base is white and yellow. It has no green light as it is on the water and it does not touch the ground. The final light is all three colors combined, white, green, and yellow. White, again for the searchlight. Green, because it touches terra firma, and yellow, because it also has a cautionary warning. This beacon is for a designated heliport. You will find them mostly on hospitals where life flight helicopters land. The warning comes in where only a landing pad for helicopter exists. Unless you are very good and have a seriously stole airplane with a good headwind, I would not attempt to land here unless you are a helicopter. So exactly when does an airport beacon operate? Officially, it operates from sunset to sunrise. Other than that, it operates anytime the field is IFR or has a ceiling of less than 1,000 feet and or a visibility of less than 3 miles. In navigating an airport, the map of an airport is not only very helpful, but can be essential, especially in an unfamiliar airport. Let's take a look at Fargo Airport and its airport diagram. The first step to understanding how to navigate any airport, especially the controlled airports, is to understand the difference of the movement and the non-movement areas. These terms to me can be a little confusing. Just think of the movement areas as where ATC has control over the movement of the aircraft. The non-movement areas ATC has no control over and you are free to move about as you will. This is how a non-movement area is depicted on the diagram. In Fargo, we have the North Hangar area, the main FBO or Fargo Jet Center, the cargo ramp, the main terminal area, the Air National Guard ramp, and finally, the South General Aviation area. All these areas are non-movement and you can move about freely with no communication with ATC. Anything else on this map would be considered a movement area and you must obtain clearance from ATC in order to access them. Take particular note of the two areas depicted on this chart, the HS1 and HS2. These are hotspots, or areas on the airport where a runway incursion is most likely to occur. Pay special attention to these areas. These markings with the solid line followed by a dashed line will show you where the divide is between the non-movement and the movement area. Like the rules on the road, you can pass where there is a dashed line on the center line, but you are not allowed to pass if you have a solid line. You will always find the solid line prior to the movement area. This is telling you that you cannot cross that line without ATC clearance. Coming the other way through the dashed line, you have more freedom to move about unless otherwise instructed by ATC. Now let's delve into the signs you see on the airport along with the markings on the surface. Some of the first signs you will see are signs with a yellow background and bold black lettering. Each of these signs will have a direction arrow associated with them. It will point in the general direction where it is telling you to go to access that area that it is defining. Each of these signs may be in either a non-movement or a movement area. They are simply a direction sign pointing you to a position on the airport, whether it be a runway, taxiway, FBO, military area, etc. Each of these signs may be in either a non-movement or a movement area. They will be located just prior to the turn that you will need to make to access the area that you are heading for. One of the best rules of thumb on these turns is follow the yellow line. Especially at night, 
the perception of the lights can be misleading. So if you follow that yellow line and those direction signs, you will always make the turn where you should and not end up in the grass. Once you are on a taxiway, you will find signs that have a black background with yellow lettering. There is no arrow on these signs. These signs simply tell you where you are at the moment. For example, if you have been given a clearance to taxi from the South GA in Fargo to runway 18 at Echo via Bravo, and you happen to see a sign with a black background and a yellow letter that says D or Delta, you are not where you are supposed to be. You need to be looking for the B or Bravo sign. As you reach the runway, you will see a sign that shows you the runway hold short line as well as the taxiway you are on. This area is probably the most important area on the airport. Notice that the sign for the runway is red with bold white lettering. Think of this as a stop sign. This is going to designate the hold short point of the runway. Notice as you approach this area how the yellow taxiway line changes to include a dashed line on each side of the solid line. This leads up to another surface marking that is similar to what you encountered entering the movement area. This time the markings have two solid lines followed by two dashed lines. More and more of these hold short areas are accompanied by sequenced yellow flashing lights on either side of the taxiway. All of these markings are in the same place in line with each other on the taxiway. Just prior to this you will also see markings on the taxiway that are large red boxes with white letters telling you what runway you are approaching. Notice that on an intersection departure that red and white sign will show both opposing runways. In this instance, 18 and 36. The placement of those numbers should always correspond to the direction where the approach end of the associated runway is. So if we are on Echo intersection or Bravo 3 intersection, the 36 is to the left because to the left or to the south is where the approach end of 36 is versus the 18 that is to the right because the approach end of 18 is on the right. Where the importance to this comes in is which way do I turn in order to take off. From the Bravo 3 intersection, if you are departing runway 36, the approach end is to the left, so I need to turn right in order to take off on runway 36. Likewise, if I am using Bravo 3 to take off on 18, the approach end to 18 is to my right, so I need to turn left in order to utilize runway 18. The area past these markings belong to tower. This is where you must obtain tower clearance in order to cross this area or you will have a runway incursion on your hands. So let's back up a moment. What if I am needing to taxi across a runway in order to get to the runway where I am going to take off from? I am still talking to ground control and yet I need clearance from tower in order to cross over a runway. So how does this work? Simply put, ground control gets permission for you from tower to access that runway. Just be sure to know that when you received your taxi clearance that you were verbally cleared to cross that runway and not told to hold short. In today's world, ATC must either clear you to cross a runway or tell you to hold short. You must acknowledge that clearance or they will repeat it until you do. Just remember what that clearance is when you get to the runway crossing. Never feel embarrassed to ask again if you are cleared to cross. This can save both you and the controller a great deal of paperwork and embarrassment. One other stop sign possibility that you may encounter is the ILS hold short sign. The associated ground markings look like a ladder with double rungs. Past this area is called the ILS critical area. When the ILS is in use, an aircraft past this area may cause an interruption of the localizer and especially the glide slope signals to approaching aircraft. This hold short is not important on solid VFR days, but it can be very important when the weather is IMC and the ILS is in use. One other of these signs might be a do not enter area. It may be a side access road or something that is closed where you just need to stay away from it with your airplane. Once you are on the runway, there are still a few signs you may see. First, you may see those signs that have the red background with the white lettering that are simply letting you know you are crossing another runway. At this point, you have been cleared to take off, so just consider these information signs that you are crossing an intersecting runway. 
another may be another one of those yellow signs with the black lettering in an arrow showing you the direction to a taxiway. The other one is a big black sign with white lettering. These signs will simply tell you how much runway is left available in thousands of feet. For instance, just south of the Charlie intersection on runway 18 in Fargo, this sign tells you that there is 7,000 feet remaining to the end of the runway. These signs are located every 1,000 feet to the end. This may not mean a lot to a Cessna 172 pilot, but it means a great deal to the guys who fly the heavy jets IFR, and someday it may mean a lot to you too. Airport lighting is there for you not only to navigate an airport at night, but to help you find the airport at night from the air. The airport lighting system is also a very valuable asset in low visibility conditions, whether at night or in the daytime. Back on the airport, taxi lights are blue if they are on the side of the taxiway, and green, or alternating green and yellow, if they are centerline lighting. The alternating lights are showing you an exit from a runway onto a taxiway. Runway lighting is primarily white. The white light will give you the visibility that will help you to readily identify a runway even from a distance and distinguish it from any taxiway on approach. Remember these white lights and know that if you are surrounded by them rather than the blue taxiway lights, that you are now on a runway and hopefully you have a clearance to be there. On a runway with a published instrument approach, both the runway edge lights and the centerline lighting if installed will turn to yellow towards the end of the runway. Specifically, the last 2,000 feet, or half the runway, whichever is less. The reason for the latter, if you have a 3,000 foot runway for example, these yellow lights will only be on the last half, or 1,500 feet of the runway. Again, remember what yellow in the system means. It is a caution. In this case, a caution that you are coming near the end of the runway. This again can be an invaluable asset in low visibility conditions. These lights are two-sided with white on one side and yellow on the other. It is simply to keep things straight on opposing runways. Whenever you have the end of one runway, the other direction is the beginning of another. On each end of the runway, another two-sided light can be found. These lights are red on one side and green on the other. They can be found on the runway threshold and are used to identify it. You will see the red lights as you come to the very end of the runway, warning you that you should probably stop or you will be taking out not only the threshold lights, but possibly the approach lights, the localizer antenna, and maybe even use the airport fence as a barricade to make that final stop. On the other side, or approach side of the threshold, you will find the green lights. This is simply telling you to continue as you are in the right place and on the correct side of the runway as you approach. Again, it is your green light to land, provided, of course, you have clearance. One other set of lights you might see on the threshold are on either side of the runway. They are bright white strobe lights called reels or runway end identifier lights. These are high visibility lights and make it very easy to locate the threshold of the runway that you are landing on. Let's not forget about the VASI lights, or the Visual Approach Slope Indicator lights. There are a few different types of VASIs out there, and there is also a PAPI, Precision Approach Path Indicator. Slight differences between the two, but they all work the same way. Utilize these lights wherever they are available, and they will keep you on an appropriate path to the runway, regardless of the runway conditions. Upsloping or downsloping runways, narrower runways, or wider runways can all give you different illusions that your glide path is correct when it may not be. The Vassies and Pappies will help you to stay where you need to be on the glide path. I will not dig into the approach lighting system too much as there are so many varieties and it's not that important to understand and know by heart every acronym. On the approach lighting system what is important to you is does a runway have it and basically what does it look like. You will find a diagram of the approach lighting system on an approach plate or even in the airport facility directory.
My YouTube channel is Ryan Anderson 3620. Please subscribe to my channel and you will receive notices of new videos that come in. 